Hi everyone, this is Ken here again. Uh, welcome to part four of my uh, beginner ZBrush uh, tutorial series. So, so far we have covered um, a lot of the basics, including the interface, the subtools, the brushes, uh, kit bashing, using wiring and, and geometry. So the next thing um, I want to move on to is uh, the start of using Z-spheres from the project files. Um, so in video two, I created a very simple concept creature head. And I was kind of thinking maybe I should show you how to create a body to go with the head using uh, Z-spheres, okay? So the way I'm gonna do that is if I press my comma key and I go to my project files, I have um, Z-spheres. Okay, and um, you can build anything from scratch with Zsphere, which I will get to later. But for right now, I want to show you how you can use any of these kind of files to create a creature. So I love using the cave trot. Okay, this one. And what's nice about this cave trot, it's, it's very much based on the Lord of the Rings cave trot anatomy. Okay, very simple, basic shapes. And how Zspheres work is if I go to um, move, I can pull any of these Zspheres. And as you can see, Activate symmetry is already on, okay? So look, I can pull the chest out. Almost looks like Big Hero 6. And I can pull that up to make a head or a neck or pull it down that way. Okay, same with the toes. So I could pull these out. Crazy looking feet. Again, I can press Control Z for undo or Command Z. Okay, and with draw, I can create new C spheres. So I press draw there, and press move, you can pull it out. See? And draw, maybe put another one over here. And press move. So that's how I would use one of the preset packs. So I could try this with Dragon. Let's see. I'm just going to try the Dragon. Press no for a sec. Now here's a Dragon's Easter. And again, I could move any of these around to give me a different area where I want to make the Dragon fit up there. Longer neck, longer snout, you know. Like that. Or I could just go document, new document, not save, and over in my tools get a base Z sphere. Comment to close that. Here's a Z sphere on its own, on the floor. I press T there again, so I had to transform on. And now I've made that mistake again of leaving an object on my screen flat. So what do we do? How do I get that off my screen? Get rid of the object. It's layer and clear. And now it's gone. Okay. There you go. There's my Z-Spot. And how this works is I'm going to go draw. I'm going to put on activate symmetry. And create. Go to the side where I know I have two of them. And create two more z -spheres. Put one just for a minute. So we go move, pull that. That's my neck and my shoulders. If I wanted to start creating another character, and then with scale, I can grab this piece here and make it bigger. Like this. I can draw on another one for the head and scale that one to be a large head. So it's just draw, move, and scale. So move lets me. Grab any piece here and put it around. Scale lets me make it bigger or smaller. And draw lets me put on more. So now we've almost got, they could become ears if I wanted. And for nose. You can just start building shapes and 
figuring out how you want to pull them around. Okay. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to start with cape trotting. Okay. So let's say we pulled all of these around with the move tool. As I said, I already have a head created somewhere else, so I'm going to pull this on up. They kind of give him a bit of a gut, and I pull that up, pull the head up a bit. Now, if I want to see this as a sculpted form, I press A, and it lets me see it. I press A again, back to these views. Okay, so now A. If you see the form I want, I want the neck to be a bit skinnier, shorter. So, we scale. This, move it. Okay, so that's kind of the form I want. I might bring the elbows back a bit, hands. Forward, maybe make these big round hands. Okay, so let's say that that was the body shape for my concept creature I want to start. Now I press A, I'm going to duplicate my sub tool first. So back over the sub tool, duplicate so I can keep one Z sphere. Now I go File, Save As, Concept, Creature. So remember to save as file, not document, file, save as, simply to be able to actually, and it's a .zpr project, and that is your file, because sometimes what happens is people press document and press save, and then you reopen this file, but because you haven't pressed file and save as zpr, or save an object, or save the tool, you open the document, but there's no 3D object in it, it looks exactly like this, but nothing will move, because you've never saved any of the 3D information. So it's very important to press file, save as, not document, save as. So file, save as, and if you haven't saved, um, ZBrush is very good at telling you document, save as, and giving you a warning to say you should save the ZPR. Okay, so I'm gonna select my top sub tool, my top layer as I always call it from my Photoshop experience. And I'm gonna turn off the bottom one, and I'm gonna press A, right? and then press Make Poly Mesh 3D. Okay, now I can sculpt on this and just change it to a, a more visible clay. Now I can sculpt on my creature using my creature brushes as before. So um, if I want to go back to sub tools, I would go, here's my PM 3D Cave Troll. So this is the project file as it is now. So PM 3D means Poly Mesh 3D. If, and you see that the C sphere version has disappeared over here in my sub tool menu. If I want to go back to it, I go back to this cave trial file here. And that tells me I can go back to there and start working from that point if I want. But I'm going to work from the P and 3D point. Okay, so I have my PM 3D cave trial model here. I'm very happy with the shape overall, just for doing a bit of sculpt. Okay, as you can see, it's 41.245 kp. So I'm going to divide it up a bit to subdivision three. That's pretty good. I'll go one more maybe and get it up into our hair range. Yeah, and delete my subdivisions. The reason I want it up to a nice high range is I want to take my creature sculpting tool and just start having a bit of fun. I'm going to use the nose tool. Like nose tool should really be putting on a nose like that, like a goblin nose on a creature. Okay, what I like doing with it He's using it for some kind of maybe, if I use it upside down, I could use it as ridges, like this, on the body. Okay, maybe I could put it on the elbows. What I like to do when I'm doing a lot of creature design is use tools, not specifically for what they were designed. So use a note, like making eyes out of mouths, for instance. Okay, this is um, an eyeball of a creature. I'll put that on there. We start to create some kind of weird 
vents in the arms. You know, maybe this guy breathes through his shoulders. Maybe it's um, has scales on its side of its legs here and gills rather than on its, on its neck like other sea creatures if that's the kind of thing they want to do. It's good to experiment with this, so it's a, it's a very good practice within um, concept. Okay, so I'm going to go scales and I'm going to bring down my, my Z intensity again. So I'm just getting, get softer because I remember if I put the Z intensity high, I get really thick scales. I don't want that. Maybe I'll try my standard brush. Go back to alphas as we did before. And find some alpha I can use for doing scales. So something like this intensity down. And the reason that's happening like that is I have it on dots. I need to have it on the drag brush. Since it's too big, don't like that brush. I'll try this leathery skin instead. I'm going to change that to salt, so it cuts it. Now I'm still working on this model here. In ZBrush 2019, because all my brushes are still set up that way. And I see that the main difference between Z19 and Z20 was that um, the uh, Z sub and Z uh, add brushes seem to be slightly uh, the opposite. I'll have to double check that in my next video. Okay, so now I'm going to go and get it done. I use a bit more of the scales and creature add brush. So the creature brush, no scales. The sides are intensely down the more so that it's so high. I love this neck feature. I love using this neck and features for different things. Things back like that, I was following her vertebrae with the elbows and armor. Put it on the of the game. And fins on the side of the leg, racing stripes. And these, these are actually teeth, but I think they just make kind of really good, like stubby horns. See? Now remember, if I don't like this model at any point, I can go back to my original cave trial with the Z spheres and the non-poly mesh 3D model. Okay, what happens though is if I was to go back to this and sculpt on this, it would break apart and some brushes won't work because it has to be poly mesh 3D in order for me to sculpt that. Okay, now remember I have no head, but that's because in the next video, I will bring my head in for my other projects. Now it looks like a see future these that sculpted um, crazy things that he got going on could be because he lives in the sea and like barnacles, like he got on the bottom of the boat. It's really adding a bit of depth to him, isn't it? I'm going to try to spike him instead. That's what spikes No, I don't have to follow up with the teeth as future parts. Let's try it with a different brush. Let's try the dark brush. What's the hex? See? Almost Monsters Inc. kind of thing going on. So, anyway, there's our creature base done. And I will pop the head on for the concept creature in the next video and continue to show you some more of the tools. Hope you enjoyed that. Now remember, just a recap, I go back here and turn back on my Z-spheres, turn off my trial, and with Z-spheres, you can move all of these things around, okay? There you go, from Z-spheres to Creature. See you soon.